and says twice as many cancer cases as in 1990. That's the latest statistic from French Institute looking at the leading cause of death. Well, actually, the leading cause of death in men in uh, France and the second leading cause in women. Despite undeniable uh, therapeutic progress, cancer remains a crucial public health issue, especially considering the increasing number of cases. Let's bring in our uh, culture reporter and science reporter, I should say, um, Julia Siegler. Give us a sense of what this study reveals. Well, Gavin, the study was based on data from uh, the, uh, the, the the French regist cancer registries from 1985 to uh, 2018. There's a gap between uh, 2019 and 2023 because of COVID-19, because we're lacking data. So on that period, they did statistical projections. But indeed, the first observation is the number of new cancer cases that has indeed doubled since 1990. And there's an increase of about 98% in men and 104 in women. Now, uh, it's important to understand that the increase is largely due to population growth and population aging. So demographics actually accounts for 50% of all these new cases. Now, for the rest, of course, uh, it's related to increased risk and particularly to associated lifestyle uh, factors such as tobacco and alcohol consumption, but also uh, imbalanced diets and eating these ultra uh, processed foods, but also sedentary behavior, which is a huge factor as well. It's also linked to improved diagnosis because with biopsies and and medical imagery now, of course, we're detecting more and more cancers and at an earlier stage. You mentioned particularly about um, the stark contrast with, between men and women, women particularly uh, when it comes to lung cas uh, cancer being affected. Exactly. It's important to understand that ca cancer is never the result of one factor. It's uh, lots of factors that interact with each other and beyond aging and genetic background for which you can't really do anything. Indeed, uh, you, you, there there is a, a huge... Uh, uh, habits are very important. And more and more women in France are actually smoking. Uh, and men are actually quitting smoking. And we're seeing this direct correlation where, uh, you know, the difference is striking when it comes to lung cancer. You have a 4.3% increase in lung cancer cases for women every year compared to a 0.5% a uh, decrease in men. Now, however, men, that said, they're still the most affected by uh, cancers altogether. It's the leading cause of death for men, the second leading cause for women. Women, and they're affected first and foremost by prostate cancer, then followed by lung cancer and colorectal uh, cancer. And for women, we all know it's, of course, breast cancer that comes in first, uh, followed then by colorectal and lung cancer. Now, there are some, some cancers on which we've really uh, gone a long way and we have uh, better survival rates. So, for instance, prostate and skin melanoma, breast, colorectal, we're really able to detect them earlier and to treat them better. But then we also have another category of cancers that go completely undetected to the immune system and who have much worse prognosis. And I'm thinking about all of the cancers, of course, that are linked to the central uh, nervous system, to the liver, to uh, lungs, esophagus, and pancreatic, uh, pancreatic um, cancer as well. There are some cancers that are retreating, thank God. Uh, for men, for instance, colorectal is retreating and because they're smoking and drinking less, but also uh, because we've put together a, a nationwide screening program where they're asked, uh, starting at 50, to be screened every two years. When people are watching this, I think there's a sense of, you know, it's quite stark to hear that the figures would be essentially doubling since 1990. But on the other hand, you've got targeted treatment therapies, which also help improve the prognosis. That's right. We're still using what we call traditional therapies, so surgery, uh, ke chemotherapy, and radiotherapy. But we have these targeted therapies, like targeted uh, radiotherapy, where you're going to inject these nanoparticles inside the tumor, and that's going to help preserve also uh, healthy tissues that are around the tumor. But I think the, the biggest breakthrough is definitely immunotherapy, where you're trying to help the immune system detect uh, those cells. But some people actually don't re don't respond to uh, to uh, th this treatment. And recently, a French team announced at the International Oncology Congress in Chicago that they made a breakthrough when it comes to epigenetic therapies. This is very new. You have to understand that for a really long time, until recently, we thought that we were born with this genetic baggage and that it didn't really change, right, with time, uh, except if there was a genetic modification. But indeed, the there are external factors, since we're very young, that come and change our genome. And so these uh, epigenome, they're small little cells that are around the DNA, the DNA strand, and they're kind of like these little tags that tell the body whether a gene should be expressed or not. And so if, we, if you can tweak that, then you can turn back your body on and uh, you can understand why it has a major role to play when it comes to the resistance of those cells to immunotherapy. Julia, good to hear from you. Julia Siegler, our science editor.